Alright everyone, welcome. My name is Mamaster. Today we're going to go over a quick feature update to Dust. This is probably for alpha version 3.1. Um, yeah, so welcome. If you're uh, new to the channel and new to the project, uh, this is an ongoing project. I've been at it for about three years now, learning how to program. Uh, it's been a very fun way to learn, and I recommend it if anyone wants to know how to program that you start off modding a game that you enjoy playing. So it's been a fun experience. I am getting quite far. Uh, three years ago, this I never thought I could have done anything like what I've just done. Um, but over the last three weeks, I have done item transferring in dust using the item pedestals. So up until now, the pedestals have only been able to display items. They've always had recipes. Um, but they don't do a whole lot normally. I thought maybe I'd use them for like an infusion crafting setup or something. I don't know. But then I got the wily idea. Let's do some item pedestal transferring. So uh, the recipe for the item pedestal is slabs on top, blocks of four, and glowstone dust. Uh, red pedestals are red slabs with red blocks and glowstone. Blue slab pedestals are blue blocks of blue slabs and pedal and glowstone etc etc so the recipes are all the same just the variant uh, block types uh, or stone types the, the different stone types make up the different pedestals makes sense the wrench is a new item that mainly only deals with the pedestals it's not really wrenching any other things it doesn't wrench blocks to turn them or anything uh, it's just mainly for item pedestal linking uh, the recipe is depleted crystals with iron uh, depleted crystals are gotten from the crystal furnace uh, with regular crystals inside, so uh, it does a little bit of starting work to get here, but once you get here, uh, you're pretty much good to go, as long as you have a good supply of stone and glowstone. So, from there, what happens here? Um, let me just break this and replace that real quick. So, what happens now? Item linking with pedestal. So, you got your, fa your, your fancy-ass wrench. You link the receiving pedestal to the sending pedestal. Now you'll notice that there's this crazy particle effect that goes on uh, when you have the wrench selected and say we have the block stored, you see the position stored, uh, 177701. Um, uh, we're gonna get the last one here. This is 197701. Cool. Uh, let's grab another pedestal from here maybe. Oh, well, that sounds well. Why don't that work now? It's a, it's within this crazy ass field of of particles. Why won't that work? You can only send items to eight different pedestals. Anything more than that, and it doesn't work. Uh, you just saw me there clear that out by shift right clicking on the ground. Uh, you can't shift right click in the air; it don't work. You have to do it on the ground. So, uh, you link the receiving pedestals to the sender. The sender can only send to eight receiving pedestals. No more than that. Also keep in mind that black pedestals cannot connect to purple or any other colored pedestals for that matter. Stone pedestals are neutral. Neutral connects to other colors or other neutrals. Colors can connect to neutrals, but colors cannot attach to any colors. Uh, either direction, forward or backwards, can't connect to another color. That's the, not the same type unless it's a neutral one, at which point, who cares. Um, so that's kind of how the pedestal linking works. Pedestals then send items based upon their links. So if we have, say, some regular pedestals here, I think I've already linked these up. They sure are. Um, so they've already been pre-linked. If I say, let's grab a stack of stone here. Boom. As you can see, it fills up the stack. It fills it up at a rate of about four per. Um, so it's, it's about four per, per instance. Oh, ha, fudge, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, boom, boom. And you'll also notice that if the pedestal, say, has a stack of blocks, it will fill all pedestals here with some of that stack until the stack's depleted. So what happens here is if you put a stack of blocks in a pedestal, it will fill up blocks in all of the pedestals along here. So it kind of basically evens out the stack size, if you will. So if you want to, say, split up a stack size, make sure this pedestal's full, then you can split it up. Otherwise, it attempts to split it up based upon what's being inserted, and the hoppers only insert one item at a time. Pedestals send four items at a time, which means 
the hopper will never fill it up quick enough. Unless, of course, maybe you have multiple hoppers. Um, maybe then you can get enough stacked in where it'll actually split them up a little bit. Um, but it won't split any higher. I mean, it only splits things higher than four in a stack. Um, and it can only send four at a time. Uh, so if you have a full stack on here, it sends four real quick to all three pedestals and basically split it up in, into thirds. Uh, the only thing that's not thirds necessarily is you have, um, so that's 20. That's another 20. Well, that would have been a little bit more than 20, it would have been 24. So, um, and that's because when it splits, it checks this one first, then it splits it against all the other ones after that. So it splits by default, unless of course you filter things. So we're going to, we have some filters here. Obviously, these are all bigger than four, which means they're going to attempt to split across here. So we're going to put an exact upgrade, exact filter. It's going to filter for stone. This is going to filter for all other stone types. And then this is just empty. So if I put a stack of stone here, because the stack is more than four, it's going to go four in here, four, or the remainder in here, because it's, it's also stone. So I do this. Boink. Why is it going here? Because this is fuzzy for all stone types. It goes in here because it's asking directly for stone. So that's how that works. Now, if I were to hopper this all in, you'll notice that it only goes in that first hopper. And that's because it can't split up the stack size, so it checks that first hopper every time. If that first pestle can accept the item, it'll go in there. Now we'll do this one. So this one only accepts other stone variants. Um, and it won't, again, it won't go over to the next one because it's not splitting the stack. And then grass, because it doesn't match either stone types, will only go in this last pedestal here. So that's how that works. Now, say let's overstack it. Let's overfill it. Uh, let's, um, so we've overfilled it. Th because this one takes any stone, it's full, though. It can't accept that. It'll just stay back here. So it's, it's what I call overstuffed. Um, and so it'll stuff up this pedestal and then nothing will happen. So no transferring will take place if this pedestal is stuffed and nothing else can accept it. Now, if it can't be accepted, uh, then obviously it'll transfer through. So that's how that works. So automatic stack splitting if you have a full stack in here. Um, now say you want to use stack splitting, but you still want to hopper things in. Uh, that option is still available to you provided um, you go through a little bit of trouble here with redstone. Uh, boom, you can see that we have full redstone signal here. Oop. So you, you can actually detect, okay, we have a full stack. Whoops, I didn't, I, I meant to half stack that one. Boink. Oh, now look, we only have a half stack. So if you really want to, you can actually um, give pedestals a redstone signal. If they have a redstone signal, they don't typically send items through. So they can't send items with a resistant signal at full. Okay, cool. So if you do want to send items, unclick it, boom, you're good to go. So say you want to stash a whole stack and split it up between your three or four pedestals, so you get an, an even stack going, you can do that, and then, obviously, redstone options. So pedestals take resistant signals in. They also have resistant signals they emit uh, based on the stack size inside. So a little bit of resistant control. Uh, with your sorting system. So that is just your basic pedestal uh, transferring bits. From there, we have upgrades. So this is your default upgrade. It's called an ancient coin. It's a loot item. It's also craftable, as you can see here. Um, it's used for lots of other things. You can craft other coin types. So these, these are lettered coins. Lettered coins really don't have any special uses necessarily. You can then craft the upgrades. So, if you will, the coin is the upgrade base. If you want to make an upgrade, get out of a coin. Like I said, coins are loot, so you can get loot from other chests. Um, it just goes into the regular loot pool for, for uh, dungeon chests and, and stuff. So things like the Batania uh, Lumium should be able to drop them as loot. Um, and they're fairly rare loot, so you won't get a lot of them, but you'll get a fair bit of them, at least early game exploring, until you can actually craft them. So... Uh, that's how that works. Uh, so now we're going to run through all 20 different types of um, upgrades. Uh, there are six of them I won't go in too much in depth into just because they're fairly self-explanatory. Um, but 
the most part, let's uh, get started here. So we're going to start off with the pedestal upgrade, auto milk, and shearing upgrade. So uh, this one's fairly simple. A lot of pedestals have uh, interaction with other Im inventory objects in the game. Um, so this pedestal interacts with the chest below it. Um, and it, what it wants to do is it will look for either shears, uh, and it could be any type of shear like that, um, or buckets. So we're looking for buckets for milking cows, um, or shears for shearing sheep. So we, we have that. So if we have buckets and shears in here, what's going to happen? The sheep won't get sheared because what it's doing is it's looking for the first slot in this inventory. Now say the first slot is this. It's still looking for buckets. Uh, no matter where it is in this inventory, it's checking the first item it runs into. Bucket, bucket, bucket. Sheep's not a bucket. A sheep is, however, a sheep. So what it does is it shears it, takes one durability off, and then that goes the, the resulting item. So because it sheared the sheep, it gets wool. Wool went in the pedestal. Um, and so that is how, what happens there. Pedestals can then be linked to another pedestal, so that if I were to link that, that would have gone into another pedestal through the, the pedestal sending. So uh, so there you go. Now you can share sheep. What if I don't have that in there and I have buckets instead? That's right. If you send these items out, it will continue to milk a cow. But yeah, milk. So we have the ability to milk cows and share sheep automatically with pedestal upgrades. So kind of a nice kind of a nice thing to do. So that is that pedestal upgrade. Now we're gonna grab the tree chopper. What does the tree chopper do? Uh, we're gonna grab that as well. Grab that. Um, so I've already have this linked up in a little bit of a system. I'm gonna grab some bone meal real quick here. How does the tree chopper work? We're gonna plant a tree. We're gonna grow the said tree. And the tree chopper, because I have it linked to another pedestal, will transfer items as soon as items go in there. So the sapling, boom, goes in, sapling's back in. We're going to upgrade it with this upgrade. Boom. It is going to cut up all the wood, pass the outputs to the, to the chest, and then you notice that it stopped. It did not cut any of these other leaves. These other leaves are despawning. So how does it grab the other leaves? Some pedestals can actually have other effects on them. So we have magnetism here. Uh, magnetism is an effect that um, uh, is part of the spell system in this mod. So if I grab some dust here, I'm going to need red dust and blue dust and white dust for this and a flint and steel. Um, and I'm going to grab the new, I'm going to grab a blank token just to show you how this works. And let's, yeah, we got white dust. I need a crafting bench. Um, I currently don't have a good way to get dust from creative inventory, which is kind of a terrible thing in my opinion. Um, but maybe later I'll add a way to do it better. I don't know. Anywho, we need an effect that gives us bigger range. So what happens is because this pedestal magnetizes all items that it breaks, uh, it pulls them into the pedestal with the magnetism effect. By default, it doesn't do that for a very large area. Um, but you can upgrade that area with the magnetism effect. So the bigger magnetism range you have, the more range you have for the tree chopping itself. So magnetism is a recipe um, that I will kind of show you here. Uh, white dust is arbitrary. I just threw a bunch of white dust in there. Uh, but you throw your token in there with the spell uh, recipe. You make the spell. The spell goes on to your item. So we have magnetism two. And now, boom, all the leaves are gone. So, if I want to go back here and grow my tree again, boom, you'll notice that even though this is a much bigger tree, our Magnetism 2 effect is giving us a lot more range. Um, so it actually, even at Magnetism 2, we have a decent range that goes all the way up to here. What you may not realize is that the range also extends below. So if this would have, say, been in the middle here, it could have gotten this full tree. Um, but otherwise, you can see the range on here, you know, this is Magnetism 2, is a pretty sizable range, um, which is nice. So that is the tree chopper magnetism uh, effect combo here. So uh, that's kind of how that works. Actually, I will keep this on me because there are a few other upgrades that are affected by magnetism. So, um, but yeah, so that is the tree chopping upgrade. Pretty easy, not bad. 
Uh, now we have crafting upgrades. So we have a few crafting upgrades, a one by one, a two by two, and a three by three crafting grid. These are pretty easy. You put a inventory below the pedestal. So this is one that requires an inventory below it. And with the inventory below it, let's just grab wood logs here. We're gonna slap pedestal upgrade one by one on it. What this does is this will take so what it does is it looks for each individual slot. So this slot, can I craft an item with a one by one slot? Obviously that should make planks. Uh, boom, planks, cool. And it took that out. If I have two items in here, it will make more planks, but it won't make any more planks than what fit there. Ah, there's my other set of planks. So. It will not use up this wood log because it, it wants to hold that in there in case maybe you put more wood in here. It will have the wood already there, it will stack in here, and then it will craft it. So it will leave one item left for crafting unless it is like, say, milk buckets that are used in cake recipes. Obviously, um, it won't, you know, it won't keep that milk bucket in the recipe uh, just because it gets used up. So that is the unfortunate part, but that's how that works. So. What about this uh, two by two upgrade? How does two by two work? Two by two checks the first four slots of the inventory. So one, two, three, four. So if you look at your player inventory or even a crafting bench, the first four slots are these four slots. Um, if you want to make a recipe of like say sticks, I am using first slot, f uh, first slot, fourth slot for this, or I'm using second slot, uh, or no, second slot, fourth slot, uh, doesn't do anything, but obviously up and down works, right? So as long as it's up and down, it works. What's interesting about this is because this is slot one, slot two, slot three, slot four, it checks the first four slots and then says, okay, so if slot one is a wood plank, I can't do anything because I don't have a recipe for the other two, three slots. But let's say if slot three has a wood plank, uh, and it actually has wood in there that I can use. Boink. Made sticks. Seems a bit weird, but what that is, is if we go back here, that recipe is this recipe right here. That's that's exactly what this recipe is. No, wrong. I, I am incorrect. That is this recipe. So it's a bit weird because slot one, slot two, slot three, slot four is how that works. Uh, if I had player inventory, it would make more sense, I guess. But slot one, slot two, slot three, slot four is kind of how that works in here. So if I want to switch them to this recipe, oh, that does not go in there. So I want to switch the recipes around slot two and slot four. We'll do that. That also makes sticks eventually, someday. Sticks. Uh, it made the sticks and passed already. Crap. Anyway, so that makes six as well. So um, you do have to remember that it uses a slot configuration. So one, two, three, four for a four slot. For a nine slot, it uses one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, the one slot one is easy. The the crafting you know one by one is easy because it uses each individual slot as a crafting recipe, if you will. The two by two one uh, is a bit weird just because it uses one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, empty slot. This slot's unused. If I put wood here, um, we have 62 wood. We'll wait around a little while. Still 62 wood. It cannot craft in this slot, but if I have a recipe, say, here, and then, uh, let me see, one, two, three, four, okay. So let's go one and three. Um, do I have more planks in here? I don't. Boom, boom. So you see those are two valid recipes. Even though they're in the same inventory, it checks the first four slots, then the next four slots for two different recipes. So you can put multiple recipes in one dropper. A uh, chest obviously holds 27 items. So 27 divided by four, um, you're looking at like eight different recipes you can hold in here. So uh, pretty cool. Um, diamond chest from uh, Iron Chest Mod. Fuck, I don't know how many slots it has. There's a lot of recipes you can store in there. A lot of recipes you could potentially store in there. And it uses, like I said, the slots. So it does look a little funny in the inventory. Like, oh, this is a, uh, this is a stick recipe. You know, it looks weird that that's a stick recipe. But it is. So that's kind of how that works. So 
Having said that, obviously, this makes a lot more sense here. So this is your 6x6 six six grid. Uh, theoretically, this will craft wood because obviously it can. Like, it just checks all nine slots. If the recipe is valid, it goes. Obviously, that's a good recipe. Uh, so sticks, um, if you have sticks, obviously that work as well. Boom, boom, boom. So that's stick recipe, so obviously that works. Uh, but where that comes in handy is now we can make chests. Boom, there's a chest. Boom, there goes the chest. So there's your 9x9 graphing grid one. Obviously, if we say use a chest inventory, um, it would use, um, you know, let's grab a chest inventory and, and actually use it to show that off. Um, so say I want cobblestone. Where's my cobblestone at? If I throw cobblestone in here, wood in here, and I save this recipe. Let's do that and that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hmm, I feel like I'm forgetting something. But anyway, like I said, it will check the uh, the, the slots. Do I need to upgrade that, re-upgrade that maybe? Why is it not working? Um, you know, it's an alpha build. There's a few bugs. I don't know why that stopped working all of a sudden. Should be able to check the inventory for log. You know, let me go. Hold on here. Let me just grab. I have tested it with a few different chests. Not everything yet, though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, duh. Of course that doesn't work. <laughs> That's not a valid recipe. <laughs> um, there you go. So now you have furnaces and, and chests. I'm adult. Obviously, that was an invalid recipe. So you can see it can confuse you. Obviously, I was confused there. Like, why is this not working? Well, because uh, it wasn't a valid recipe. So uh, your furnace recipe is this, right? Slots one through three, all cobblestone. Slots uh, four through six, basically. Uh, cobblestone, not cobblestone. And then the last three, cobblestone. So three cobblestone, one, not one, three cobblestone. Same for chests. It has that middle slot empty. So boom, that's the recipe. And if I want to just craft planks after that, that's so. In that way, you can store extra recipes. Now, what if I want to do this? And I want to, uh, maybe, maybe I want to do this. It will still check that other inventory and pull from there. So you can upgrade your chest, uh, which is kind of nice, and go that about that route. All right, so uh, yeah, there you go. That is the crafting part of the whole item pedestal stuff. Uh, like I said, it's a little bit confusing. Once again. Um, I want to just make make note that this is a basic item transfer option in Dust. I do plan on adding other options later on that are like higher tiered that are easier to use, uh, but the lower tiered ones are going to be kind of hard to use. They're not going to have a whole lot of function, uh, but they're going to have enough function that you can at least use them. So, my next one is the enchant upgrade, the pedestal for enchanting. Uh, we're going to go off over here. Look at that. I'm going to grab some uh, EXP bottles or bottles of experience. There we go. So we are going to upgrade this with that. Now, if you right-click with the wrench, you'll see that XP and pedestal is zero. XP is 180. You'll also notice that goes right away. Those kind of linger around for a little while until they get into range and boom, they're gone. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means that this also is affected by magnetism. So if you want to say, throw magnetism on here, uh, you know what, let's just max out this magnetism effect. I'm not entirely sure how much I need for it, but we're gonna just do that. And yoink, boom, magnetism five. And we'll throw that on there. Now you'll notice that uh, Boom, boom, boom. 
fair bit of range on here now. Um, there's, I mean, there's, there's a pretty good range. It's not amazing, but it's still pretty darn good. Uh, by default, the config for magnetism uh, defaults at the highest of five. Uh, it will go up to 10 if the config is changed. So you can get a pretty freaking big range on magnetism if you so choose. So that's the magnetism effect. Okay, so it stores experience. That's cool. Um, what else does it do? Uh, let's grab a shovel. And a book. You're probably thinking, I know what this does. That doesn't do anything. Why does that not do anything? Well, again, this is another item that uses a block underneath of it for an inventory. What it'll do is it will enchant books bonk, and items if there's experience inside. So that says 237 now. It was down, uh, down about 20 experience. So level one enchantments use about 10 experience or so um, for that. Now, what if I add on, uh, I should have not done that, a bookshelf. Let's just get a bunch of books here. We got a bookshelf. Boom. Oh, there's some pretty pretty awesome effects that go on there. So, same as an enchantment table. If you put... If you do happen to put um, other things on top, you'll realize that you'll get... Um, there's 224, 211. So, we're still getting tier 1 enchantments, obviously. Um, so, not, not great. Let's go maybe this. You're noticing that there's no books coming in here. Why is there no books coming in here? Oh, there's a book. Oh, there's no more books. Boom, we have 50. We had a, almost 200. We added more to it. Then we enchanted a book, and it now is at 50. It used a bunch, but guess what? Projectile protection too. Oh, that's pretty fancy. So, the pedestal will magnetism I uh, XP in. It'll hold the experience to be used for enchantments. So if you want to have a full enchanting setup, um, oh, by the way, regular enchantment table only goes up to this high for tables. Um, the detection rate for this one is three high, which means if you want a wall of enchantment tables, you can go with a wall of enchantment tables, um, five long by three high, so you get 15 total. Um, and that will give you uh, basically a maximum enchantment table size for enchanting items and books. Keep in mind, though, you will have to use up about 1,400 experience, so uh, 1,400 experience roughly per enchant at this size. If you want to decrease that size, you have to get rid of bookcases around it, and it will then enchant at lower levels, as you can see there. So it just enchanted for about 20 uh, experience there. So... Um, yeah, so if you want lower level enchantments, less bookshelves, you want higher level enchantments, use more bookshelves. Um, and this works really good with uh, the uh, the max tiered mob spikes in the mod, uh, which drop experience on, on mob death. So this will grab the experience from there and use it to enchant and do whatever things. I'm not done yet, though. There is more than just that. Um... I wonder if we still have those shears over here. Shears. Nope, I got rid of them. Crap. Let's go grab those shears again. Shears. Let's grab a ship. Grab the shears in here. Hey, Lewis, we now have two durability off of here. Awesome. You're probably going, oh no, what does he have to store now? That's right. We have yet another upgrade to the pedestal uh, enchantment. Uh, let's grab a mending book. Mending book. Anvil. Some pedestal upgrades can also accept enchantments. Um, not all of them can. So if we look up, say, coin, and try to apply an enchantment to that, it does not work. So only certain ones can accept them. Um, 
and we'll kind of go over uh, what ones those are. So we have Magnism 5 and Mending. Uh, we have 11 experience in here. This needs 2 durability. And, oh, it's gone. Oh, but it's fully repaired. Hmm. For, you know, 1, 2 experience, it fully repaired this item for us. So, pretty cool uh, that it can also repair items as well as um, mag magnetize and enchant. So, the enchantment stuff happens at the base tier upgrade. The magnetism will just grab orbs in a larger area, and mending will actually repair your items and tools. Um, once it has been enchanted or repaired, it will go into the pedestal, which then can be sent out to your network. So that is how the enchantment pedestal works. It's pretty, pretty, pretty fancy. Um, and that's kind of how that works. So that's the enchantment pedestal. Um, all right, we have some easier upgrades here. These are a lot easier to explain. Um, we'll kind of just run through them really, really quick because they are, like I said, pretty easy to explain. So what we have here, oh, by the way, you can place them on multiple sides, is we have an upgrade that will take one item, hence the, uh, the number one on here, single item export, exports it from the network into an inventory. Um, so if I have a bunch of wool here, you can see that uh, what, ha what will happen here is it is exporting the items into the chest one item at a time. Just chink, 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 one item at a time. If I go to the next one, which is the item export upgrade, put a whole stack in here. Oh, the whole stack's gone, the whole stack's in here. So uh, you have a, a single item inventory one and a ex export stack one. Uh, the reason for the single item is the single item will also iterate through a inventory. So we're over here at the crafting again. Let's uh, throw a pedestal on here that has a single item upgrade in it. And let's throw some cobblestone down. Oh, look at that. It is putting them through every cobblestone that's in here, leaving the blank spaces blank. It's pretty nifty. Um, however, on the flip side, this, because it tries to stack it, it'll stack it all in one slot. It will also stack it in empty slots, so it's not as good for the crafting part there. So that is the reason for the difference between the two of them. Uh, one does a full stack at a time and ignores empty stacks. Uh, this one does a single item at a time and, and uh, will check the items to make sure they match. Um, and if it's empty, it leaves it empty. So that's the two differences there. The next one we have is this upgrade here. So we have two wool in there. Let's, let's take a half a stack here. And I'll get that out. So we have a half a stack. Throw this on here. You can see the block is taking out of there. Ah, we have a half stack in our inventory. Put it back in here. Oh, half a stack. So it pulls them out stacks at a time. Um, currently, there is no upgrade to this that will pull out any less than a stack at a time. Um, do keep in mind, though, if you want to pull out less than a stack at a time, you can. Um, oh, no, never mind. That's something different. If you want to pull out, say, one item at a time, this will only send um, items. So if we do this, if I do this and connect them, you'll notice that we have that. If I take that off, this still has wool in it. And it only gave us 16 wool to begin with. If I take that out, 32. So basically how this happens, if you want to keep items in here, so this one, like I said, pulls out a stack at a time. If you want to pull out, say, one item at a time, you give it an, a redstone signal input of 64. It can only accept 16 per face, so you'd have to wrap this thing in levers, uh, except for one side, which has a redstone signal coming in, um, to get it to only output uh, one item, essentially, after it fills up with a full stack in its own inventory. So that is the one way you can limit transferring a little bit, um, but otherwise this will pull out a stack at a time. There is no single upgrade for it. Uh, there's just a full stack at a time upgrade. So that's that upgrade. Now we're going to go to the dropper and the placer upgrades. So cool. Uh, the dropper is pretty self-explanatory. You throw it on surface. Uh, you throw the dropper upgrade in it and, oh, oh go back in here. Mm. Mm. That's right. It just drops items. Give it a rental signal and it stops. Um, 
but that is the dropper upgrade. So that's pretty cool. The next one on the list of things is the uh, the block placer upgrade. So we have that, we have that, we put that in there, and boom, block of grass. Block of grass. It's the it's the display is just not rendering uh, very quickly. So it places the block, and then the display says, "Oh, there's no items in here." Cool. That works out pretty good. Guess what? This one also accepts upgrades. Um, so if we have our anvil again, and let's do this and take you away and do that. Uh, let's put you in there. Let's anvil you. This is another one that accepts upgrades. We can put efficiency on this one. Now, what does efficiency do? Efficiency makes something more efficient. This is not necessarily more efficient. This is just better. There is no range enchantment in the game. Um, so efficiency is the one I went with. Well, that's weird. It didn't place it right here. It placed it right here. Weird. Why would that be a thing? Uh, the efficiency one upgrades the range. That's exactly what it does. So if you want bigger range yet, boom, five blocks away. Pretty cool. Why, why would I care about doing something like that? Now let's put, uh, let's take that out. Let's, uh, this is a flat world, so I don't have much room to work here. We're gonna do that. Uh, is this the range one? That's range one. Let's get some sapling. Oh, well, that's cool. I now have saplings I can place from a remote location. So if you wanna make a tree farm, make it look fancy. Uh, you sure can. Uh, these pedestals do not have to be right there. That's pretty nice. Um, uh, so yeah, that is how that works. So we have a block pr placer, and uh, yeah, it places blocks right where you want them. So that's pretty easy to do. Up just upgrade it with efficiency. Efficiency is easy enough to get a hold of. Cool. So dropper, placer, good to go. Next up on the list, we have various filter upgrades. Uh, we have a exact filter, a fuzzy filter, a mod filter, a blacklist, a blacklist, and a blacklist version. So how this works is this filter will detect an inventory below it. Um, so like over here, this is a regular filter. This is detecting and checking for stone. All stone, only stone, will go into this pedestal and can get passed through it. This pedestal will not accept diorite. Even though diorite is a stone variant, it won't accept it. It has to be exactly stone. The fuzzy bus, or the fuzzy filter, is just like it sounds. It will accept diorite, it'll accept stone, it'll accept granite, polished diorite, uh, as long as one type is in here. This is a physical item that has to be in here as well. Um, so that is the downside of using this filtering type, is it does have to be an exact item, so you have to have at least one item to filter them. Um, but then, you know, once you do that, it will filter that, you know, all of that type of item. So all of the wool could get filtered through here with a fuzzy update, uh, a fuzzy one. But say I want just white wool, I could filter it with white wool, then get all the other wool over here. Or in this case, stone and all the other stone. Pretty cool. So that's kind of the fuzzy bus. This one is a mod update one. Uh, once again, we'll get another inventory here. Um, let's say we we have a bunch of dust saplings. Uh, we have the blue dust sapling. Let's grab a purple dust sapling. We'll throw that in here. Are these linked? I forget. It should be going in there. Oh. You know what I you know what I did? <laughs> That's a blacklist filter. Let's uh let's get that back. Oh, let's uh get that out of there. Let's test that again. Just to make sure it works, huh? Boom, there you go. So because I used the mod filter upgrade, uh, it re received the item because this is the same mod type, it's gonna go in there. So that's kinda cool. You can filter out everything from a single mod uh filtered wise. Now, as you saw earlier. Uh, this is the blacklist upgrade for mod, so it will not accept dust items. So if I don't want dust items to be in any chest with this filter, it won't go in there. Pretty cool. 
Um, same thing with fuzzy. If I don't want any type of stone uh, at all, so not even regular stone, not diorite, not granite, it won't go through this filter if it's a blacklist filter. And the regular filter, this will say, I do not want stone in this inventory if this upgrade was on there. So blacklist, blacklist, and blacklist. Cool. You're probably going, okay, cool. Um, all these filters, iron bars is the main filter type, wool to make it fuzzy. Mod uses glass, just a glass block with a filter makes a mod filter. The blacklist version takes an ink sac to make it blacklist. Um, the next one takes black wool with the blacklist filter because it's, you know, wool to make the fuzzy, black wool to make the, the blacklist fuzzy. And recipes for this, this just takes the regular mod filter upgrade and with black dye, um, we'll turn it into the blacklist filter. So uh, that's how that works. Um, the easiest way to tell filters apart is the arrow on top is the through arrow. That's for the the regular filters. The blacklist filters are the reversed. So blacklist has the arrow on the bottom going all the way through. So that's how you check the different filter types. Uh, but yeah, that was kind of the uh, the different filters that you have available to you. Um, pretty basic filtering, but uh, you can do quite a bit with it. So. Um, yeah, that is your filter types. Your last few things you have here is we have an effect upgrade and we have a block breaker upgrade. The block breaker upgrade currently, um, I wanna make it so you can also break blocks from a remote location. Currently, I don't have that set up. I, uh, after I get done with this video, I'll probably go do that. Uh, but as you probably figured, it will break the block in front of it and throw it into its inventory. So that's pretty easy to do. Uh, a resonance signal will disable it. So. Block breaker upgrade, pretty self-explanatory. It breaks blocks. And uh, the, the recipe for this does require obsidian uh, with a diamond pickaxe, so it will break any block. Um, that's not bedrock, I think. Pretty sure. Pretty sure it won't break bedrock. bedrock. I could be wrong. I don't know. That could be kind of cheaty, but I'm going to leave it in just in case. So that's how that works. Uh, it's block breaker. Not too bad. All right, so from there, we have our last and final upgrade, the pedestal effect upgrade. You're probably going, uh, there's no recipe for this, because there's not. Uh, the filter upgrades for effects are special. They only work for the spellcrafting. So I'm gonna grab some more dust here. We're gonna grab the blue and that, and green and yellow and orange maybe. And there's a few upgrades you can do with uh, with this. Let's grab a crafting bench because I don't need all that. Okay. In theory, any dust effect can be put on a coin. Does it work in a pedestal though? Is in a whole nother story. So. Um, steel here. So even though you can put any effect on a coin, saturation effect, this in a pedestal doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything at all. Well, that's kind of a bummer. Yeah, sure, it's a bummer. Uh, that one was the magnetism effect, obviously. Any items that are dropped in an area around it will go into the pedestal. Obviously, that's too much range. Still too much range. Perfect. So by default, it'll pick up in a 5x5. Five five. Um, if you want to expand it, just add white dust to the recipe, uh, and it'll expand the range at how much it'll pick up. So it can go up to a uh, let's see, five's default, so add 5 to that. Uh, total. So, decent range. That is the magnetism upgrade. If I remember correctly, we have a grower up upgrade. Um, let's grab some farmland. And let's grab some seeds. Let's just place this all around here. So what the grower does is by default, every couple hundred ticks, 
it will force a growth operation. All right, that's cool, I guess. And it's not great. I mean, it, it works. It stacks with multiples. Oh, apparently this has a bigger range than I uh, I remembered. This also has a 5x5 five five range, by the way. What it does is it will check all the blocks around it and apply the bone meal effect to it. And as long as it can still apply the bone meal effect, it will use bone meal. If uh, all the blocks around it are grown, so let's uh, say place more of our fertile earths down. Range is apparently a very big deal. Um, but as you could probably tell, uh, giving this thing bone meal is a very, very potent way to do a farm. And uh, it will apply one bone meal growth operation per bone meal, uh, per plant on a random tick um, on a random plant. So it's pretty random uh, in how it harvests or not how it harvests, how it grows things, uh, but it will continue to consume the bone meal until all the plants have been, have been grown around it, at which point it will stop using bone meal. Um, it basically checks if it can use bone meal, if it can, it uses one, if it can't, it won't. Um, now that it's full, it says 13, uh, it will not be able to grow anything else, so it won't use up any more bone meal. Pretty nifty, that's how that works. So, uh, that is the grower upgrade, not bad. Um, yeah, so that's the grow upgrade. From there, we have a few other upgrades. And if I remember what they are. Harvester. Oh, this will be nice. Boom. Harvester upgrade. And this one has a magnetic effect by default. You do not have to upgrade the magnet magnetic effect on it. Uh, I feel like the harvester, if it's going to harvest stuff, it might as well pick up stuff as well. Uh, so it checks for all the growth, uh, grown plants in that area and harvests them. It does not replant them though. So kind of sucky, but does not replant. Oh shit. Yeah, overdid it. And that one should have made the sower upgrade. So as you can probably infer, uh, if the harvester harvests, the sower probably sows seeds. So any seed in its inventory, it will check the area around it and sow them in the ground. Um, it will not sow them on grass. If it can't grow them on grass, it will check for farmland or tilled soil in the area around it. Uh, again, uh, this one is affected by the effect range. So if the sower is effective you know, the sore spell effect 5 is activated, has a much bigger range. Also, the sower will check all blocks within an area, even above it and below it, the pedestal, which means if you want to have, say, all these pedestal effects active, so if you want to, say, have your harvester here, and let's grab another one for the grower. Uh, do I still have the grower effect? I don't. I lost it. Um... If I still have the grow effect around, I would use it and show you, but I don't. Uh, but anywho, if you, uh, you know, obviously, uh, if I am har just doing stuff, it will harvest them, and then the sower will replant, and they work in conjunction in the same area. So that's kind of nice. So, uh, just a nice little miniature farm, uses some basic spell crafting. Um, probably a decent, a decent, uh, beginner thing to go off and do you have three upgrades and you have the dust to make the spells um, you should apply the spells to that and have the effect pedestals for a basic basic farm so that is kind of the cool thing with it is um yeah kind of a basic uh, farming thing so that wraps up all the different effect pedestals that we have in dust in this update um, i'm quite happy to finally be able to release it it's been like i said three almost weeks to a month here um so it's been a long time in the making and i'm so happy to finally have it out so i can actually start playing with it myself so thanks for everyone for stopping by hanging out this has been fun for me i don't know about you you're probably bored out of your mind at this point uh, but that's okay there is a lot of options in dust uh, as far as upgrades go and as far as item transferring goes um basically my idea was i want to make cake in my mod how do i do that i can milk cows i can get the wheat I can craft the recipe, I can then filter it in my item system to 
figure out where I want cake to go. I can place the cake on the ground. I can chop the trees to make the chest that I put the cake in. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the gist of, of why all the different upgrades. I was thinking Batania in mind when I had the item dropper. So, boom, you have an item dropper. Good for you. Um, but, yeah, so that's kind of how all that works. Thanks, for you guys, for stopping by hanging out. We'll see you next time. Have a good day. Have a good night. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.